Hello, I'm Dylan and today we're going to learn how to save an archive file in Flojo. So, first of all, what is an archive file and why might we want to save one? Well, typically, data analysis in Flojo is done using workspace files, which you can see here. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop my workspace into Flojo. And the workspace file is nice because it's pretty small sized, you know, it doesn't take up that much space on our computer. But one of the downflaws of, of the workspace is the fact that it can sometimes get disconnected from its data, especially when sharing data or trying to share these workspaces with other researchers. Because you can see the workspace is here, but its actual data files are here. And each time the workspace opens, it has to reload these data files. So if I want to keep these two things together, I can save them as an archive file. Archive files are nice because they also will save revisions in my workspace. So that way I can see the changes I'm making in my workspace as time goes on. These archive files are also very nice for sharing with other researchers since it has a copy of all the FCS files and the workspace together in the archive. And we'll just send the one archive file to other people without having to worry about it getting disconnected. So the way to save as an archive file in Flojo is to go to our file tab, go to save as, and go to save as archive. I'm going to save it to our desktop here. OK, so the archive can take a little bit of time to save because it's making a copy of all the FCS files, which can sometimes be on the order of gigabytes. So it's going to be a much larger file than our workspace file. But you can see it's finally finished saving here on my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and close this file here and then go ahead and open up my archive. It's going to take a second to open, too, because, again, it's a larger file. So it's going to take a little bit longer to open, but it's, it's going to reconnect faster with its, with its data inside the file. And just to compare the sizes, so I'm going to go ahead and check out the size of my workspace here if I get info. And then if I get info on the size of my archive here. So you'll see that my workspace is only 1.9 megabytes, but my archive is 421 megabytes. And so the reason the workspace is so much smaller, again, is because it does not have these FCS files saved with it. It reconnects them each time, whereas the FCS files are quite large, so the archive is much bigger. I have my archive file here ready to go. Let me go ahead and make some changes. It doesn't really matter. I'll just hook it on these gates here, maybe. OK, I have no idea how I set this gate the first time. Let's go ahead and change it. I'm going to drag and drop this change to the group. Maybe make a really distinct change so that way we know what uh, the changes have occurred. I'm just going to go ahead and change the group color since that'll be pretty obvious to see when we reopen our workspace. Close. OK, now everything's this color. So the benefit of the archive, one of them, is that when I make my changes now, I'm going to go ahead and save. It's here, save. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and close my archive again. Yeah, I want to keep my changes saved already. Now I can go ahead and reopen my archive one more time. And this time it's going to ask me, OK, what version of the workspace do I want? And there's three currently. Three because there's the original version that I had. And then these two versions were the two times I saved. I saved twice, if you recall. I saved once by pressing the Save button. And once when I was closing, it prompted me to save, so I chose to save again. So it made two more versions. The newest version is always going to have the largest number. So the oldest version, the original version, is going to end with this dot one after its name. And then each new version is going to increase by one. So this is the second version. And then the third newest version that we're currently on is here. If I open this, you can see it's going to have the changes I made, which notably the gates are now a different color. They're no longer blue. But if I go ahead and close this, and maybe I want to go back to my, one of my older versions, maybe I don't like the changes I made, maybe I shouldn't have made those changes, I can go ahead and open up the ACS file again. And this time, I'm going to choose to go ahead and open up that first version. All right, perfect. And now you can see here my gates are blue again. The gating, the changes I made are going to be no longer changed. So I, I can go back to see the original versions. That's one of the benefits of these archive files. It not, not only saves the SCS files, 
with the archive, but saves the revisions to the versions of the workspace. All right, thanks for learning how to use an archive file. See you next time.